Hello everyone, Stephen Goldstein here uh, with the first of several uh, taped recordings and before you know it I'll also be doing live recordings. Um, I'm getting the uh, <clears throat> equipment ready including a, a nice microphone for live streaming and a mixer and I must say just having the toys is a lot of fun. But more importantly today I'm here to chat with you about neurofascial mobilization and how effective what I can show you in a workshop setting or on the online courses or however you may obtain your information, uh, how it can assist you in your clinical practice and in very simple terms how to master the technique and then see the amazing changes that can occur that can occur when uh, utilizing uh, this approach. So let's talk a little bit about neurofascial mobilization. Uh, the nerves are bundled in a sense or wrapped uh, by, by connective tissue. Um, uh, that connective tissue is, is primarily uh, an epi a neural tissue, it's a nerve connective tissue, and it, like all the main uh, wrappings in the body, it has layers. So the fascial form, whether it's the tummy and the viscera, or whether it's the nerves, or whether it's surrounding the muscles, uh, uh, it basically creates the scaffolding. It, it creates the, the, the pouches, the layers, uh, the mechanism of support. And with nerves in particular, that mechanism of support is in the form of a lot of tunnels. Now, the mechanical interface, or actually let's take a step and talk about the neurodynamics, basically it's combining the mechanics and the physiology of, of how nerves behave uh, either when uh, you're actively moving your body or even passively having someone else move your body. Their main function is to withstand tension as a mechanical function and the second primary purpose is to glide. Um, also the nomenclature is called sliding but I'm, I'm paying uh, homage to John Sharkey here uh, because uh, sliding creates friction where gliding creates movement. So nerves glide and so motion needs to be restored for a nerve. The second thing you want to understand is this motion occurs through a bed of musculoskeletal tissue and that tissue needs to allow the nerve to move. Now if a nerve gets tight then if the tension of the nerve occurs then it will contract and the muscular tissue and will hold that tissue in tension as well. So often you get false readings, as we normally do when we palpate a muscle, that the tension of the muscle could be for a variety of reasons. And basically I'm saying another reason, one of the things you have to check, is the neural tension. Now, uh, this course that I'm teaching, uh, Neural Fascial Mobilization of Upper Extremities, is going to use the, uh, the theories from um, uh, David Butler, uh, and Michael Shacklock. Now David Butler did a lot of work in the late 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s uh, and he has a great book called The Sensitive Nervous System and in that book uh, the upper limb tension tests have began to be renamed as uh, upper limb neurodynamic tests because of the dynamic movement that the tests are attempting to assess. Now what those originally were called tension tests, they were assessing the tension. So when you put your limb, let's say the periphery in this case, under some form of elongation, some of what you are feeling is not just the tightness in the muscle tissue or tight or contracture of the superficial fascial tissue, but what you're also feeling is the tension of the neural tissue. And that's what we're going to identify in these workshops. I'll teach you how through assessment to identify the tension and differentiate between muscle tension and neural tension. And then 
We'll go a step further. I'll teach you a combined surface palpation with movement of a joint to clear those neural pathways. So my premise is before you have someone coming in with ner nerve pain or neural discomfort, you can already be treating it. You can already understand that you have tension and you can get to it way before it becomes dysfunction. The same thing occurs like with an impingement or a compression syndrome. Um, if you understand the muscles that press on these vessels, you tend to what? Look for that. Uh, you may not get the release immediately because it's often very complicated and you have to uh, address a variety of soft tissues. But having only a muscle-centric approach is not going to aid you in uh, any of what you're attempting to do. Uh, if you want to have more, um, more clinical outcomes that take into account more complexity. So that's what I'm talking to you about today. We have a workshop uh, coming up uh, July 16th, a Sunday, uh, here in uh, Melbourne, Fitzroy, through Continuing Education Australia. And I would hope uh, that you would come along and uh, join us. Uh, and learn how to treat nerves, neural tension effectively. Well, that's what I have for today. Uh, this is the first of, I think, what I'm dubbing FTTV, Fascial Therapy TV. So thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon.